Hello everyone and welcome to a special series of videos. This is the first time we're trying something like this and I really hope you enjoy. So let me know in the comments if this is a format that you like. Today, we're gonna start with a little project where I'm gonna be showing you some of the techniques that I use to build this very simple scene, this ruins. It's a little bit of a graveyard. And we're gonna be dividing this into three parts. So this is part one where we're gonna be taking a look at the basic construction, you know, the low poly and high poly sculpt of this archway right here. In part two, we're gonna go over UVs. In part three, we're of course gonna go and finish with a little bit of texturing. You don't wanna miss it. And to do that, you of course need to subscribe, share, and like this video. With nothing else to add, let's go to this new series. So now we're gonna start with the archway of stones that we have, and I'm gonna show you the process that I normally like to follow for this kinds of asset, this kind of modular asset. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the source image, and we need to find the proper scale. That's probably the most important thing at this point. So I'm expecting this to be quite, quite big. So the gate's probably gonna be around that size. Maybe, and this is the important thing, maybe a little bit more. You always wanna go a little bit more than what you think and an example that i can give you very very quickly is halo in halo infinite when they were doing the doors one thing that people realize is that the doors were massive compared to the size of like the spartans and the reason why we need to exaggerate the size of certain things is because otherwise the camera the movement things will not feel real right so technically master chief is seven foot tall it's like two meters and a bit right so these things right here are four meters this is like a full complete wall in a house but again that's again expected in games because we're going to be working with that sort of like sense of believability, or as we like to call it, very similitude, right? So I'm going to try to find the size that makes sense for this particular wall right here. And as you can see, that's five meters tall. That seems a little bit too big. So I'm going to try to keep this at four meters tall. That's a, a number that I prefer. Again, so it's an even number. It should still give me enough room, like the character should be able to go across it fairly, very nicely. And remember, we can always scale things a little bit after texturing and after everything, and we're not going to lose too much Excel density. It's still going to work perfectly, perfectly fine. From this point, now what we need to do is we need to do the blocking of the, of the element. So I'm going to start with a cylinder here. I'm going to rotate this in 90 degrees. I'm going to position it on the center. I'm going to ignore the fact that this is not perfectly symmetrical. We can try to find the perfect symmetry right there, but I'm going to ignore that for just a second. I'm going to grab this one right here, and I can see that it's not perfectly cylindrical. I actually like that. I like the fact that it's not a perfect like cylinder. It has a little bit of a, of a sort of like open um, curvature right there. And then I'm going to grab this guy's right here. This guy's right here. Control E. And we're going to extrude up to get the thickness right there. Okay. So something like that. Now, all of these faces, they can be gone. There we go. We definitely need to uh, make sure that we bridge all of these elements right here. Perfect. We, we grab the lower faces. I'm going to snap them on Z so they're completely flat. And I'm going to extrude them down. There we go. Now, you can see that as we keep going further down, they do seem to be a little bit more open, right? Like the stones are a little bit bigger. So I'm going to scale them up a little bit. I like that sort of like fact. That's sort of like a... Um, thing that breaks a little bit of the symmetry. So we're going to have this right there. And that's it. Now, as for the thickness of the whole thing, we definitely want to try to keep a specific size in mind. So I'm going to keep one meter. Uh, my one meter might be a little bit too much. I'm going to keep half a meter, so 50 centimeters. That, again, seems about right for the size of this, like, big stones that we're going to have right here. This is the blocking of our element, the very basic shape of our element. What we want to avoid is we want to avoid having doors that, again, might look right on, um, on the world, right? But this looks way too cramped. So even the capsule and the collision box, we might have a little bit of issues with that. If you feel this a little bit too big, again, this is the, the perfect like moment to sort of like evaluate whether or not this is too big or not. I think it's fine, to be honest, especially because it's the entrance to the graveyard and we can have some like fancy stuff. I think this is perfectly fine. So the next thing we need to do is export this into ZBrush. Once inside of ZBrush, of course, we are going to be bringing in the element. So let me quickly load it. And this is where, of course, your knowledge about ZBrush is going to be really, really important because we're going to be able to, to generate all of the things that we need relatively fast. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to Dynamesh immediately. This is the first thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to grab my Trim Dynamic just to start bebbling some of the elements. I'm going to, of course, turn on Symmetry, make sure that this is working on both sides. I'm going to go very, very heavily to start, like, blending in all of this, like, horrible low-poly effects. Don't worry. This is just the basic construction of the element, but I want to blend them in. Remember that any change in silhouette 
that any change in edge that we do will be interesting on the final asset. Now, the big advantage that we have with this, uh, with this archway right here is that we have two sides to it. So if we do a good job on both sides, we're going to be able to recycle it. And if you have two archways that are very close to each other, you use one side for the first one, another side for the other one, and no one's going to notice that it's the exact same asset that we're reusing or recycling, right? Now, if we take a look at the reference, and I always have my reference open, one of the things that I'm going to see is that it has a very, very interesting silhouette, and there's a bunch of different stones. So we need to cut it. If we take a look at the polygroups, you're going to see that this is a very simple polygroup. So let me show you a trick. Press Control Shift and change this to my slice curve. So we're going to use the slice curve, and what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start slicing the stones. So for instance, I'm going to start with some big stones here on the bottom, and then as we start getting higher up, we're going to start getting more and more stones. Now, this is a big archway, so I don't expect them to be really, really big. They're going to be rather small. And once we have this, we're just going to do a mirror and weld. We're going to separate all of them. So I'm going to go sub tool and we're going to say a split, a group split and hit OK. And there we go. Every single stone that we have now is going to be a different stone. So if we go, for instance, to the middle stone, what we normally refer to as the keystone. What we can do is center the pivot point right here and start playing with the proportions. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit more dense right here, right? Of course, we need to dynamesh so that all of the holes get closed. And this is what we get. Then we move on to the next one, similar thing. We center the pivot point. We do this right here, dynamesh. Now, hop to sculpting, guys. Like there, There's really no secret to, to the creation of this assets right here. We need to start like thinking about how to build this thing. And sometimes building it piece by piece is the way to go. Trim dynamic, dyne mesh. And one thing that I do recommend on this particular asset is you don't want to have any sort of like empty spaces because I'm going to show you a technique that we're going to use for the retopology and texture of this thing that requires things to overlap so that we don't get any sort of like air pockets, okay? So at this time, yeah, I just... You're going to have fun and you're going to start using all of the techniques that you probably learned maybe in one of my courses, the other like Seabrush courses, or on your own. And we need to just start polishing all of these elements right here. Now, remember, we mentioned that this was going to be an asymmetrical element. So it's going to be symmetrical from left to right or pretty much symmetrical. We can break that a little bit more. But for instance, here on the back, we can maybe be a little bit more aggressive. The closer you are to the center line of the object, the more you want to break symmetry, because that's the, the part where it's more obvious that things can be symmetrical. As we get farther and farther away from that like middle line, we can definitely um, avoid having that much uh, like symmetrical issues and we can keep things a little bit more equal. There's a very nice brush that I like using for, for rock creation, especially when I want to really change the profile. So for instance, here again, I'm looking at my reference and this like point right there doesn't make too much sense. So I'm going to use brush, the move brush, but I'm not going to use the normal move. I'm going to use this one called infinite move, move infinite depth so that I can push this and, and create this sort of like, um, like shape that I'm looking for, this sort of like uh, keystone shape, right? And the infinite move will move the polygons here and all the way to the back. So you don't get this sort of like weird effect where things are not like perfectly matching up. Here we can also do a little bit of like, well, I don't want to do asymmetry just yet, but we will be doing asymmetry later on. So let me isolate this ones real quick. Again, go back to trim dynamic, turn on symmetry back again. And we can start like playing with a little bit of the bevels on the whole thing. Again, if we look at the reference, there's always a little bit of like chip stone and like different like angles and different movements. So we can definitely use that to our advantage to create like a nice, interesting pattern. There's a very nice brush that I like, and this is a little bit more aggressive, and it's called the Dream Smooth Border, that one right there. So that one's really, really, really good because it, it, it definitely sort of like carves into the stone, as you can see right there. So it generates a little bit more of, a, of an interesting kind of stone-like approach. This is where I would definitely remove symmetry, for instance, on this stone right here, and start playing with generating some interesting planes on one of these rocks right here, and then a different kind of like element on this one right here. So this is the final result of the, let's say, initial pass of the creation, right? Like we still got things to fix and we still uh, can polish this even more, but it already gives us a nice idea of how this like big archway is going to look. It definitely looks wider than a normal door, which I think fits with the entrances for the graveyard that we're going to be doing. And I want to show you something here. Some people don't like working with all of these different elements because they feel like it's like too many like uh, objects or too many points. So here's what we can do. We can actually go back into the tools and say merge 
and then merge visible. And this is gonna merge everything back into its own asset right here. And then we can do something called other groups. There we go. As you can see, all of the groups are gonna be uh, like created. And most of them, as you can see, I believe most of them did get like the symmetrical poly group enabled. Let's see if we can, no, it did not. It's a very similar color as you can see, but they're actually a little bit different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a select lasso to hide all of this ones right here, all of the ones on one of the sides. And we're gonna do a mirror and wealth. Well, we got delete hidden and then mirror and well. So there we go. Now we have the whole thing in a single subtool and we can quickly jump between each of the different stones because they're all a different polygroup. The only thing you need to remember is that we need to increase the resolution and keep the groups option turned on. So that when we dynamesh, every single stone will get its own resolution and its own like size. Now, once we have this thing right here, we can start working a little bit more on the asymmetry of the element. So I'm gonna break symmetry right now and I'm gonna go back to the, let me bring my reference to the other side i'm gonna go back to the trim smooth border and this is where we can really really start like playing and adding the changes in big planes that we want now keep in mind that you don't want to destroy every single stone right like it, it's it's not exactly what we're what we're looking for when we're doing this type of changes but we definitely want to add a little bit more character to the environment now for modular pieces, you want to treat them similar to how you would treat a hero asset, but at the same time, you don't want to make it too unique because if you make it too unique, people are going to immediately notice like, hey, that detail right there, like that crack or that element, it's the exact same that I'm seeing in this other archway, right? So we, we sort of like break the immersion of the, of the whole thing. And uh, as I mentioned before, as we get farther and farther away from the like center point, we can definitely start playing a little bit more with symmetry, bring symmetry back, because people are not gonna, like, it's very difficult for your eyes to be looking at this point right here and at the other point at the same time. Now, not every single stone needs to be damaged. We can have some clean stones or some stone stones that have survived, like, the pass of time, but we definitely do want to get rid of, like, all of those, like, lines and elements that we got from uh, some of the movements that we did a couple of minutes ago. If you need to, press Control shift click on one stone, there we go, to isolate it so that we can work a little bit more on those elements. This is a good point to start thinking about, hey, what if I want to add some cracks, right? Like I can see here, for instance, this side of the pillar is um, divided. There's like two stones that they use instead of a big one right there. Well, that seems like a, like an interesting detail that we could add. So we could go to this one right here, let's isolate it, and use something like a Damien Standard brush or like chisel brush to really start thinking about how this thing would look if it was like two separate stones. And it could be two separate stones, and then on one side it's like a, like a little bit of a, of a smaller stone, and on the other side it's gonna be a little bit of a, of a bigger stone, right? So, something like this. Because this line right here, we can hide it underneath, and again, no one's gonna know. So, we're gonna push all of this right here, and it's mainly about capturing some of the detail. Here, I made a little bit of a mistake, I forgot to remove this thing right here so it's important that we remove symmetry isolate this one real quick and we're gonna get rid of the elements now i kind of like that like damage that we have there on underneath so yeah, we can utilize the happy little accidents this is the, the part where i like to use the sort of like the bob ross method right and use a little bit of this happy little accidents to start adding this um What's the word? This changes to the whole thing. Very important. I do recommend, especially on the on the lines that are going to be hitting the ground, to always add a little bit of a bevel. I've always felt that things, when they don't have a bevel and they're just like straight or very sharp, it's not very natural. Things in the real world, they're always like a little bit more damaged than we might uh, expect or imagine. So, so it's important that we play a little bit with that sort of like situation as well. So I'm quite happy with the result. I feel like it looks fairly realistic and uh, and we're ready to add like the last layer of detail. So the layer of detail that we're gonna be adding here starts with noise. I'm gonna go here with a surface deformation. I'm gonna turn on noise. And as you can see, this adds just like a very general like noise mask to the whole thing. But what we can do is we can actually change the noise thing right here, the noise curve, and play a little bit with the scale to generate something that looks very, very interesting. I really like playing with the curve here to like mask a couple of areas out. And then we can play with the strength, for instance. And it's just like a general like stone effect that we want to give. See, that's just like adding a little bit of grain and it's uh, surface detail. It's not detail that you're going to see sculpted, but it's going to be there. And we're going to, of course, apply to mesh. After that, I do like using uh, like alphas. This is where alphas come into play. And I, I wish I could give you like a specific alpha to use. But unfortunately, a lot of these alphas, you actually need to buy them to, to be able to use them. So let me show you one that you can look up for yourself. So if I look for marble damage brushes simonfuchs.wordpress.com 
Um, here's the link right here. You can look at this. is 2015. Look at that. And it has this amazing, amazing alphas over here. So the only thing you need to do is to download. There we go. It's Mediafire. And we download this. What you need to do is open the uh, pack. And you're going to drop that pack in the folder where you have ZBrush installed. In my case, it's software. And then software. I get ZBrush 2025. And then C alphas, and you just drop that marble damage thing right there. And once you do that, if you go back to ZBrush, if you go to the light box and the alphas, it will be right here. So as you can see, this one, I, I've been using this for like literally the past 15 years. This concrete details, for instance, is really, really good because it adds like very, very interesting, like big, like hits and elements to the whole stone that really, really makes it look like, like actual stone. So I strongly recommend you get this. Once again, I don't want to download them and include them in the files because I don't want to get into any like copyright things, but you can grab this ones or any others from online and use them to start decorating this thing. Remember, this is a surface detail. So it, it will only change the way like the specular and the glossiness will look, but it won't change the basic like primary and secondary forms. So if your primary forms and your secondary forms are not there yet, this is where you really need to up your game and, and make sure that they're as nice as possible. Then we can grab things like this ones, this like concrete elements. I, I do like to remove a symmetry at this point and we can add some like cuts, especially on the areas that are like make the most sense, right? Again, you, you don't want to overdo it. It's like a just like a little detail, but some of this the um, like the cracks and things that we sculpted, we can use all of these elements to you know give ourselves a little bit more of a, of a nice effect. So for instance, there, right? Like maybe one of this right here has a little bit of a of an effect. Don't worry if it pixelates a little bit too much. Yes, we can increase the the dynamic. We could even turn off dynamic. We're not using it anymore. Just Control D to give the one more subdivision level and give ourselves a little bit more resolution. Just keep in mind that this is definitely going to increase the um, the resolution of the high poly, and it might be a little bit complicated to bake everything down later on. But it's a good way to just like add a little bit of an extra layer. If we load Archway 1, this was the initial block out that we did, just the basic construction. This one, yeah, the combined one right here. And if you remember, if we go back to, to Maya real quick, this was the initial archway that we did, right? So from a very simple polygon, after a couple of hours of work, we can get to a structure that's going to look very, very nice inside of our game. So this is it. This is the first video, my friends. And even though we didn't cover all of the different elements, like the gravestones and the walls, the techniques that I use to build those are the exact same techniques that I just showed you throughout this whole thing. Now, if you enjoyed the video and you learned something new, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Again, it really helps the channel. It really helps us bring you more interesting contests, more content, and of course, more 3D knowledge. That's it, my friends. I'll see you back in part two. And don't forget, always learning, always improving.